Hi, how are you today? My name is Alaba, and the name of this platform is My Health I Care. I deliberately chose the name for this platform to be that. If it's your first time seeing me, welcome. My platform is strictly for health and healthy way of living. I will be talking about a lot that I've got that I've got to do with health, especially women, because that's what my focus will be uh, will be on today. I will be talking about women in general, female and our bodies. I will break it down one after the other in different stages. Stages that I, from my own personal experience, women go through from young age to when they are old, at least to my age right now. But there's a disclaimer to this video. I want to strictly say that I am not in any way a professional. I don't work in health care. I'm not a doctor. Everything I'm saying today is based on my own personal experiences, is based on my own personal findings and my own research. If I say something today that you think uh, that concerns you, that you think it's you are not sure about, please, by all means, consult a professional, an health professional, your doctor, your gynecologist, or uh, a health, yeah, your doctor. Please, don't take my word for it. Like I said, everything that I'm saying today is from what I experience, from things around me and people around me. That being said, grab a cup of tea, water if you will, or whatever thing that suits you. Relax and enjoy this video. Let's talk. I'm having green tea lime and honey so ladies women mothers this video is for you we are going to talk about our bodies today how our body change, the changes our bodies go through, stages we pass through in life to certain age. First of all, I want to say a big shout out to women because women, we are, we are strong. Excuse me, we are resilient, we are dynamic, and we are powerful. I'm not saying that because I just want to ring praises on women. I'm not saying that because I want, I'm a woman. I want to just heal women today, no. I'm saying that because I have, from my own personal experiences, I've seen a lot of when my body has, my body has gone through a lot as a woman at the stage that I am right now, I don't think there's anything in the woman's body that I don't, I don't know about, except maybe 
God forbid, like we always say, <laughs> about uh, maybe diseases or sickness, which I'm very thankful to God for. So far, by His grace, I am okay, health wise. But uh, not all women are so lucky. Do you understand? It's not every woman that that has maybe good health. Not every woman can boast of good health. There's one a, one kind of maybe a a a, a personal um, disease or or sickness that they are passing through they are, they are, they are, they are, that is happening in their body that they 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 are they are, they are the only one who knows about it excuse me from uh, for rejecting a little because this topic is very personal to me even though I said I am I'm okay thankfully thank God yes health wise I will say yes God has been very faithful I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a young young girl anymore or a young lady. I'm in my very late advanced lady lady age <laughs> lady stage. <laughs> oh it is good to, to laugh once in a while and just you know when you start seeing things around you and you start you get to a stage in your life and you see things happening around you and seeing people something happening to people that you love or you know or you just can't but be thankful to god that you are okay i don't know if you understand what i'm saying that being said so like i said i'm going to break this this um, topic in three stages this uh, this topic about women's body their uh, their evolution because women involve their body involved things happen things happens in their body things things that it is you cannot understand even you as the woman who has that body don't you don't know what you are what your body is going through it took me a long time it took me a lot of research to 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 to, to finally be able to gain courage to make this video and i hope it is helpful to anyone who is seeing it today I hope that you start to see yourself differently, you start to take the necessary actions, you start to work more on your body, on your health, you start to pay proper attention to your body. I hope whoever, any lady that comes across this video today start take it take a proper look at herself and make a change or take take a, a take a drastic change by taking your health very seriously because it's only when you are healthy from within from inside that you are free Okay, it is only when you take proper care of yourself, of your body. When I say take care of your body, I'm not saying uh, shower, rub cream, make up, and uh, dress up and do all that. You know, women, we have time to do all those things. Our uh, uh, our body, our uh, physical body, outward look matters to us a lot. Yeah, I can testify because I've been there. It takes hours to make up, to draw those makeup, which I, I, I am a fanatic of. So don't get me wrong, I'm not wearing makeup today because this is for me a very serious topic. So I want to be as natural and honest and 
and brutal as it can be. You understand? Because when it comes to health, nobody should take it lightly. It takes us hours to dress up. We look good. We look flamboyant. We, we, we wear the best clothes on our outward body. Our house. We, we wear the best jewelry. We take time to do our hair. Hours to do our hair, makeup and all that. Yes. But we are forgetting the very vital part of our body. Which is our innermost part of our body inside of us which is the machine that controls everything the, the machine that makes you feel hijacked you wake up in the morning you are able to to get up from your bed you, you go take your take shower you wash your mouth you go to the kitchen you do all these things you go to work and come back it's not because your leg and your hand can move. That's why you can do those things. Because there's something, there are there, there, there engine inside your body. Because God, God made the human body so beautiful, very perfect. That if anything goes wrong with it from inside, you won't you 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 won't you you won't like yourself you won't that's one our body the human bodies the human body is so powerful that let me just use a very simple example our the human body is a perfect machine it's like the computer, for example, or your iPhone, or whatever uh, gadgets. You will notice when any you have any fault with your phone, yes, something, your phone, for example, manufactured, something happened to it. First of all, maybe the volume will go off, or um, the screen will shut, uh, will shut down. It won't function properly again. That's because something has gone wrong with that gadget. The same thing is our body from inside. The moment you feel something is wrong from inside, immediately you will feel the difference. How you feel, the way you feel, everything will be changed. It might not automatically start like this. It might just be, uh, is you hear people say today, uh, uh, oh yeah, I can say human being gener in general. You can hear one person tell you, oh, I'm having headaches. Uh, the other time you hear, oh my stomach is aching. Oh, I'm, those things don't just happen. Our body don't just react because it wants to react. Something must have gone wrong somewhere that makes you have that physical feel, uh, pains. You have headaches, you have stomach pain or back pain and so on. So I'll go back to the beginning where I said I'll break this down in three categories because we are talking about the woman's body today. What women go through. The stages, the three stages that is so fertile, that is so powerful, that women go through, and how they should pay attention to those, to the body, to their body after birth. That's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, first of all, the female, the young female, which is uh, the, the teenager, which is from th uh, 13, 12, 13, and so on. The girls, the, the, the girl, girl child start to have, that's where, the, that's where it starts from. You start to have 
the first stages you start your body you start to mesurate yes from that menstruation you go through a lot your body goes through a lot i'm very thankful to god that i am one of those people who never had that experiences where they get very very sick when they are menstruating when when i was a little a younger girl a young girl i I can only wake up sometimes in the morning and just see that there's blood. Beside the very first, to, uh, the, the first time I, I had my, I, I saw my menstruation, which I remember vividly. It was like a pinch under my abdomen here, and I told my mom that I'm, I'm having pains here, just, just slight pains. I knew immediately because I knew it wasn't normal. That pain was not normal. So I had to tell my mom. And she said, she didn't say anything. But the next morning, I saw, I saw blood. And that pain stayed for like two days. And that was it. I didn't have pain again. So all throughout my, my teenage years, that I menstruated before I started having children. I really didn't, I'm not that kind of, I'm, I'm, luckily, I'm not that kind of person who gets these pains. But there are women, there are young, young women, girls that menstruate that you can't, I will just tell you a very short story, true story true story we lived in a house back in the days before we moved to uh, we moved to our own house so the lady's um, youngest daughter back in the day uh, when we first moved into the house the, I think the first few months you know we didn't know each other very well I think from that beginning I experienced or I saw somebody, a girl, a young girl, just like me, maybe a little bit older then. <laughs> she was just lying on the floor, bare floor. The whole place where she, where she was lying, lying down on was filthy, filthy, filled with slimes. It was stinky. It was. It wasn't a sight to behold. And I was curious to know what was wrong with her. So in the night or in the day, depends. Depends if you're around. If you will be around then, you will hear her scream. She will shout. She will be crying. So. At that time, I used to think that so maybe she's mentally deranged, something's wrong with her. So, this went on for like a week. Excuse me. And after a while, she would, she would maybe after a, after a week or so, then you see her again. She's normal, she's moving around, she's doing, she's going about her. her normal uh, life so i couldn't i was so curious to know what was wrong with her because she just you just it's like somebody with double personality one the person you see or you saw that was just on the ground like half dead and almost lifeless or or, or sometimes when you hear her is when she's crying and screaming a week later, you will see this person bounce back. She's moving around, going about her, her, her normal day, a normal life. And I got very, very curious. I went there and said, okay, I, have, I really want to know what is wrong with this woman. Something's not right here. So, uh, luckily, her niece, the, the, sister's, uh, the sister's daughter, 
uh, is exactly the same age as as I as I am then as I was. Ask me. So she, I, I, I befriended her. We became friends. We, 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 we started talking and doing all those things. So I had the courage to ask her one day. I said, what, "What is wrong with your, with your little aunt?" Because she, she, the sick one is the, is the last daughter or the last child of their, of my my friend now, and um, and the, the last child of that woman, of the, my friend's grandmother. <laughs> so I asked her, I said, "What's wrong with what's wrong with your your your, your young aunt?" And she said, oh, that one, don't mind her, she's always sick, it's every month, it's, it's, it's a period. I said, what? She said, yeah, it's a period, it's terrible. I said, I, I, I don't understand it. She said, yeah, I said, every time. You know what they, What happens? They will, they will tie her stomach with, like, Ankara, then they will tie it very tight. Tight, so tightly that you would be afraid for her. So the dog, that even that tie alone will not destroy something else in, 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 in her stomach. So they will tie her up and they will leave her down on the ground there. So I said, okay, what, what, what are you people doing about it? She said, yeah, it's not concern me. What is going to concern me? She said, well, no. Because she was still very relatively young. She was just, you know, I'm talking about way back, maybe maybe 30 or 25 years ago. Let me say, no, 30 years, around that time. Way back. Way back. Because I was around maybe 15, 15, 15 years when we rented that house then. <laughs> 15, 11, uh, 14, 15 years. So that is an experience that is so traumatizing for me. Just to know that people, young girls, young people go through those kind of miserable pains. So you would imagine a young girl like that, we pass through that stage what her body must have gone through, what the inside of her must have gone through as a young girl or young lady. So this scares me a lot. And I know a lot of other women, young women, female a girl child that also go through those, those pains those pains all this time from that young adolescent age till second stage you go you get sorry you get pregnant that's stage two of the woman's body you get pregnant my experience is from my oldest daughter was different from my experience experiences from my son my uh, only son and my other two uh, children of all my pregnancies the most terrifying and traumatic one was my son's pregnant, a pregnancy of my son. That will be a topic for another day because if I start to talk about that pregnancy, you won't live here today. So I will just go in general. When a woman is pregnant, you experience so much that for some is the transformation that first of all is amazing 
it's a very beautiful experience it's very beautiful thing to see to know to feel to be part of to do but at the same time it is scary it's like the fear of the unknown things happens to you that you cannot express you cannot even say it to you can't you, you don't know how to say it to people how you feel it will physically show in your body outward you see the the changes in you i also have a story to tell about pregnancy which is also very personal to me my sister my my mother's second daughter if i'm not mistaken yes back in the day also when i was also very young uh she she, she got pregnant and she was admitted i know i remember she was admitted to that uh, hospital ubth then Bini. And I'll just try to to shorten this story because it's also very, very, it was one of those things that also was very traumatizing for me to experience. So I remember that I went with my mom to visit her in the hospital. So she, we are the same mother, but not the same father. And she from at least where i understand where I, where what i know back then because i was relatively young uh, i re i remember she was bedridden for a long time and i remember seeing her i didn't know she was pregnant then i remember seeing her on the lying down the, on her bed and I would not lie to you, what I saw was like a skeleton. She was paled. She looked like, I really don't know how to, to say it. She, I didn't, didn't even know if she was pregnant or not, but I was because I, I know I know her, my sister. But when the person I saw lying on the bed was somebody entirely different, totally different, somebody else. And when my mom told me, yeah, that's your sister, I said, no, that's not my sister. And I went back to hold my mom, like, what is going on here? So we went, we went home. Another day, I went with my mom again to, to visit her. This part will make you laugh. <laughs> Which, for me, is funny now, but then it wasn't funny at all. It wasn't. It was the most horrifying thing that I've ever seen my mom did, do. So we came into the hospital ward like this, and my mom saw the dad. That's my stepfather. And with all the stuff that my mom had, we were just going, walking to the to the ward. And my my dad just walked towards us like this and like blocked us on the way. And in that lobby like that, my mom stopped and he was talking to my mom. I was like a little distance behind my mom. And he said, I remember I told my mom in my language that it has happened. If you see the somersaulting my mom, my mom did, the way my mom jumped and released herself on the ground, rolling on the lobby, crying, screaming. My stepdad was like, "What did I say now? What, what did I do?" I was like, I was, I was horrified. I was terrified. I was, I was scared. The first thing that came that I understood then was that when somebody said it has happened, with what I saw, 
when I saw my uh, my sister, sorry. My, my, my sister will live long. She, God will continue to keep her alive and keep her family alive. A woman who went through that and survived it. All in the name of pregnancy. My mom was crying and my stepdad was like, he was nervous and people came, gathered, and they carried my mom and they sat down on the chair and they were asking her, whoa, 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 what is it? Oh, my, oh God, what do you tell her? What happened to you? And my, dad, my, my, my stepfather said, well, what, did I, what did I say wrong? What did I do? What, what, what is it? And my mom said, oh my God. He, and she was trying to explain that what she understood was that my, my sister, is dead and my my stepfather said no 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 it's nothing like that at all no she 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 put to bed she had the baby when i heard her the baby was like boom you know that sound like <laughs> what baby is she pregnant I didn't be, I, me too, I was on my own corner confused with everything going on. That scene at that time was like, something's not right here. What is going on? Me, I don't know. I just, ah, these people self. This one is saying something else. This one is thinking something else. Me, I'm right there in the midst of all this. My sister, my own sister's the trauma, everything is just there. I said, what did they happen here? So, my mom cleaned her eyes like this and she was say, yes, yeah, she have the baby, it's a baby girl. I remember then, it was a baby girl. And you, that cry, that tears disappeared. It became another tears again, the tears of joy. And so, why I'm saying this, the, 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 the way the woman, the woman, the female body, the things it goes through during pregnancy. What we experience as a woman when we are pregnant is out of this world. There is no word to describe it. No word. Nothing. Nothing. Then you see so women, they become, when they are pregnant, they become very aggressive. And you'll be wondering, ah, this woman used to be very quiet, very this, very that. When women get pregnant, her sense of smell, all her senses, some women, eh, I'm just speaking from here to here. Some, is their sense of, sense of um, taste will increase. Some, according to them, they say they start long throating. Some, their nose will be as gigantic as what you have never seen before. Some, you see them, you see them covered in rash or in eczema or pimples or whatever. Some will become very fat. Some will become very slim. Your body will just be ravaging. Things will just be happening inside your body because you are pregnant. Things, yes, you are pregnant. Something, some, a little person, so to say, is growing inside of you. Isn't that amazing? Human being is breathing inside of you, developing inside of you. His hand and legs are forming inside of you. You are carrying another human inside of you. It's something that is, my for me, I don't even have an expression or what to quantify the 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 power that. That a woman, or the yes, the, the, the female, the female, the the, the woman species has. I, I don't know. 
I don't know if there's any word to quantify it. It's so powerful what, what is happening that we cannot see what is happening inside of us, inside our body. It changes the things that you start experiencing, the, the growth from stages to stages, what you have to do. Like I said, my personal experience, when I was pregnant for my son, it's going to be a story or a topic for another day, a full topic. But because God is so kind and God is God, I came out of that experience. I came out of that, or, 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 or of that delivery without no problem. I succeeded giving birth to that child. And that takes us to stage three of the woman's body. Child's birth. Child's birth. <laughs> that one, hmm. I really cannot even see or start to see what is happening at that at that point you have to be a mother you have to be a woman that has given birth to understand that's why when you see some women i i'll just say this as truthful as and honest as i can sometimes <laughs> when I see women who don't like to, who, not who don't like to, who don't have children, I sometimes just look at them. These people, they don't know the, the they don't know how lucky they are. <laughs> really. And when Oyibo people, some white women or men, they say they don't like to have children. Don't, don't be surprised because all these things when they read how terrifying it is and they would rather just say no please it's not a big deal to them because they have other other options to have children so birth, giving birth is another another terrifying part of the woman's experience the woman body that's, that is in another level. Like mine. My son was supposed to come after nine months, like every other children. <laughs> or at the ninth month. But my son refused to come. He had to stay for another month. It's not just that he stayed. He wasn't ready to come. I had induced labor. And with that induced labor, I I had I have a condition, condition that I I cannot I'm not I, I cannot be able to take epidural. They call it epidural what do you I cannot be sedated. So if I have to go through labor, I have to I have to, if I have to put to bed, I have to go through the labor all natural. And with, with having an induced pregnancy, when you say you have a baby, when you say you are, you, you are, you want to, when you want to put to bed, it's already painful enough as it is. Then when you have induced labor, that one, the level, not be here. 
and imagine that going through that induced labor without any kind of pain relief that you have to naturally give birth after i gave birth to my son you know when the woman have the baby you wait for like few minutes again then you push for your placenta to come out then my placenta came out you know what happened to it <laughs> oh it was like what the busher it's like you take it I'm sorry I'm being so blunt but that's just the truth this is what this is what people my I'm taking this to I'm taking this somewhere and very soon I'll come to the conclusion my my placenta came out tattered it's like liver that the 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 busher break with the armor it was all over in pieces I went to heaven and I came back. But the moment I saw the bundle of joy that God has endowed me with, that was it. All that pain disappeared. And that is, <laughs> that is the, that is the, that is the power of childbirth. After all that experience, after all that pain, after all that, all that you have gone through, your child will come out and you have that child on your arms and there's no thing in this world anymore that matters. And I pray to any woman who is wishing and wishing and praying for the fruit of the womb that God meets them at their point of needs today, at their point of prayer. I want to also emphasize that when we go through all this stuff, we we tend to forget because that's the, this part, this is my conclusion is the part that really made me want to make this video today. <clears throat> That's like after all these things that our body have gone through, they will just now relax. It's okay. Oh. We are okay now. And that's where the problem is. That's where we have women going through so much or uh, yes so much health issues you be you you see a woman that after five years she have never she she've never visited her gynecologist and you will start to wonder why after she gave birth five years later she have not seen and I could love. Maybe if she didn't have a child again. Maybe it's until she have another child before she will start visiting her gynecologist. Wrong! Your gynecologist, your gynecologist, I'm sorry, your gynecologist is Dutch gynecologist. Your gynecologist is, is supposed to be your best friend. That's wise. Because women's body, after giving birth, is very prone to different types of diseases. Yes, it's true. These are things that people don't like to talk about. This raw truth, this, this honest things that it that stares us right before our eyes, but that we see. This truth, people shy away from it. They don't like to talk about it. It's too raw. It's too. It's too this. It's too that. Well, I think I've overlooked it long enough. I just really don't want to pretend anymore. If you are a woman watching this video today and you think I'm, I'm talking trash or I'm talking rubbish, well, it is, it's your life. But I think somebody has to do it. 
and I took it upon myself to do it. So if you don't like it, no problem. I know that some people will still like it and listen. Women are prone to certain kind of diseases that they need to tackle as quick as possible in their in their, in, in their lives in this in, in their in, after giving birth. If you are still busy, still having children, or you stop having children, it is a point of duty for you to make your gynecologist your friend. Pay visit to them as 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 often as possible, at least once in a year. In that way, anything that is going on in your body, if you have the habit of visiting your gynecologist every every year, every once in a year, at least once in a year, at least, if there's anything in your body that is discovered, immediately is discovered, or is sensed that something is not right about your body, they discover it, they'll take the necessary action. When I say woman's body is prone to diseases, we, after birth, so women start to have breast cancer. There is ovarian cancer there. There is fibroids and many others. When you visit your doctor, they do this control, this general body control. Your, 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 your uh, what do you call it? Echography. They take your, your, they take your picture. They look and see if there's anything abnormal or unusual growing inside of you, they will detect it immediately and they will start to take the necessary action to make sure that it's either they nipped it in the bud or they, they, they put you on a special medication so that that thing don't see the light of day or that disease don't see the light of day again. When you feel your your breast, yes, woman's breast. We always have this uh, this lump in our in our breast because we bear breastfeed. Like I breast I breastfed my daughter for a long time, my young, youngest daughter, my youngest child for a long time. So after nine years, I still have these things. It's not all the all the lump that is dangerous or cancerous. They are, these are milk that are conjured that is inside your breast that just is just there. When you feel your breast, you feel that that thing there. When they say that people have lump in their breast, it's not that one. The lump that is cancerous is different from the the breast, the lump that is natural that is maybe after all these years the milk has has conjured, they, they've become solid, is there with time, maybe when I'm 70 years or I don't know how long it's going to take before it disappears, but it's there. It's no problem. But the moment you feel, they already told me, yeah, I visit the doctor as regular as I can, at least once in a year. Each time I go, they, 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 told, they, they, they tell me how to check my my breast if anything unusual you go you yeah i can't do it on camera you lie down you press to your right press to your left up and down and see if there's anything you feel that is not it's, it's kind of mm, i don't understand this that's how your doctor will also dictate it and see if it's something that they have to they have to take seriously or not from that early stage they will start walking towards it. If it's cancerous, immediately they will let you know. And also fibroids. I heard people say, they say, yeah, there are fibroids. 
Mm. When they discover that they have fibro, they say the doctor tells them not to. Uh, it's not. It's not dangerous. Uh, it's not deadly. Uh, you can live with it. Like I said earlier, our body is a perfect machine. <laughs> it's a perfect machine. If something is wrong with it, something is wrong with it. If something is not supposed to be there and it's growing inside of you and your doctor is telling you it's not dangerous, it's not life-threatening, you can live with it. Leave that doctor and go and look for another doctor. You have right. Look for another doctor. Any doctor is not supposed to move his ass or ass to, to, to go the extra mile for you to help you to, to see if this thing is, is wrong or right or to get rid of that thing in your body. Leave them and look for another doctor as many as you can until you get the right diagnosis. Until you get the right diagnosis and treat yourself. Treat yourself, treat yourself to good, to good meal. Not what you put inside your stomach, what you eat. Not just because uh, I'm just, I'm hungry, just taken. Yeah, I know, we are Africans, we, it, it doesn't matter. But, they are, you know, you get to a stage in your life when there are things that should there, there should be things that matters to you that you should watch out for and it we do not just because we are hungry we just be putting everything in our mouth we should know what goes into our system visit your doctor regularly don't play with your life don't let anybody decide for you to say that thing I know serious now and everything you they take serious. No. Don't get sick first before you start to look for solution or how to cure yourself later. Take care of yourself first so that you don't get sick, so that you don't start running up and down. Because if you don't get, if anything don't go wrong, inside of you you are a millionaire you don't know what you, you don't even know you don't even know what you have until you go to the hospital and see where people are sick there are things there are some there are some diseases that are very preventive that you can you can avoid that you you you, you 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 are not supposed to it's not supposed to happen to your body like i said i'm not a professional i'm not a doctor i'm not i'm not in any way it's everything i'm saying today i'm saying it because it is about time for people for women to start understanding how serious it is to take care of their their inner self, their body from inside. We spend all this money looking flashy, looking beautiful. It doesn't take you 50 euro to see a gynecologist in one year. And in that 50 euro, they still reimburse you. Maybe they give you, uh, I don't know how much now, they still give you back about maybe 30 euro or 20 euro back. So you want to tell me now that that money is too much for you to visit a, a, your doctor to see if everything is okay? Well, um, I'm sorry that the, the video just uh, cut, ended uh, abruptly, but uh, my conclusion is just to tell you Because you know, health is wealth. 
to read it to you and to let one you can have an open discussion if that's okay with us. I'm really happy to read it to you. I think I've done my part. So the rest is up to you. So with this I'll just say good night. Have a good life. Please stay safe. subscribe to this channel, give it a thumbs up, share it and thank you for watching, leave me a comment please, let me know about your own experience, what you've gone through, just let me know, share because we all should learn from each other, we should not keep important information to ourselves, if there's something that has helped you in the past, Yes, everybody is pregnant. Uh, that is watching this. So.